Uh, another topic I wanted to get your, your thought on was that um, uh, was around finance and, and more importantly around profitability. Uh, I think you guys are one of the few, maybe the only Indian unicorn that's, that's profitable. Um, and that's an incredible achievement in a world where startups are being caricatured for just burning millions of dollars of investor money, uh, investor funding. Um, you know, how are you guys able to be so large and yet be so lean and be profitable? And what would your advice be for startups like us as we think about the future and as we think about being financially prudent? Look, I think there are two, three questions even before that. I think the first question is, what is your business model, right? So the, there are certain business models that are built to burn a lot of cash before they can actually see sure. the light of success in terms of, uh, uh, you know, profitability, yep. etc. And those are those businesses are all about market share. Those industries are all about, you know, few players will take it. All, you know, yep. winner. It's not a winner take all, but maybe two players will take all of it, right? Two or three players. So in those businesses, you have no option B but to to burn a lot of cash. We are not in that business. We were very clear that we were not in that business, uh, and we realized that. The, the notion of, you know, it's like the notion of profitability just doesn't exist in the world of startups. And there are certain fears attached to profitability, fear of lack of growth, uh, fear associated with not being able to, uh, you know, invest in new, new areas of technology, businesses, etc. Somewhere they may be true, but they're not as true as people, uh, they're not as uh, tough as people make, make it out to be. And I felt that for our path to profitability actually had a, probably about two thirds of that was a function of our, ourselves being inefficient. And just the fact on how we run our companies, et cetera, how we look at small little things was just wrong. And it is something which is a cultural notion, again, to say we will be prudent about how we how we operate on a day on day basis for example the big portion of our profitability came by getting rid of loss making customers and there is always a justification for saying if you have this customer even if it is loss making we will grow a lot at the point of time that argument is very very valid but if you will watch it over a long period of time that's not valid because the customer really didn't bring in far more number of customers because of that one customer, right? So it's a very hard argument to prove. So we got rid of almost, you know, 10, 15% of our customers to say we will not do business with you because you're loss making. So part one. Uh, part two was we looked around and looked at our cost and we asked hard questions to people. And you suddenly realize people had their own little startups running within the company. <laughs> Everyone had these, A, in engineering, everyone wants to build a platform. Everyone is building a platform. Why are you building a platform? No, no, that's the right thing to do. So you, you cut out a lot of those notions of saying building platforms and building, you know, things which are just not needed, right? And what happens is you are forcing prioritization. Profitability is about forcing prioritization. What's important to you? Today when we are profitable, I think we've been, we've been profitable now for almost 21, 22 months straight. We make a lot more aggressive decisions. I was sharing with you guys internally, the, you know, we were chatting. We have made some of our boldest moves ever in this year because we are profitable. And the level of confidence that you have because you're not reliant on anybody else. You're not always worried about, you know, what would happen to you if these things go wrong, like who will come to my savior and all of those kind of things, right? You make good decisions, you make prudent decisions, and you are you actually will see with time you'll become aggressive also in your decision making. And it's just a great position to be in uh, if you're able to actually make that happen. So you also are uh, an angel investor. Uh, I'm not sure how prolific of an angel investor you are, but uh, you're in the board of a lot of uh, companies and startups, and so you've seen uh, um, entrepreneurship or at least this wave of entrepreneurship in India right from the very beginning I mean we've been around for six years now and you know we think we were we started before you know the the wave peaked so you guys were there way before that um, you know how have, how have we seen entrepreneurship in India change in the last 10 years um, the mindset of entrepreneurs as they come in what are your thoughts on on that hey, look I think I'm I'm obviously amazingly bullish on the entrepreneurism in India in general um, and I have a long-term view to it to say, look, all the problems in this country 
uh, are the ones that entrepreneurs will solve by creating companies uh, of high quality. Uh, at the same time, the uh, entrepreneurs in India, especially the new generation, is also significantly smarter than the previous generation. Obviously, there's so much more information, so much more uh, technology which is available. I also think the companies which will come in in future will be significantly smaller in size because uh, technology creation is becoming significantly easier. Mm -hmm. So you, have, you apply this Moore's law on technology creation also. Writing a software is damn easy. Like software writing is going to get commoditized in the next five, 10 years. Like anyone on the road should be able to write a code, right? that kind of stuff. Uh, so there is the world is changing drastically. I think at the same time, the uh, unfortunately I haven't seen um, a lot of entrepreneurs approach building a business in the way that they should have. Uh, with the, I, I heard this from somebody. I think I was hearing some speech from Jeff Bezos, and he was saying overnight success takes ten years. And so, but I think we have all grown up in this world, or at least seeing this world where we are very impatient. And we just want to see things very quickly, right? It's like instant, the world of instant gratification, right? So we just want to see the, but you know, business building is still going to take a lot of time and you know, it's going to take, you're going to be systemically and you're going to be you know, uh, prudent about it. And I think that that has to get applied to how everyone thinks about their business. The, if the last 10 years of entrepreneurism has shown anything, the next 10 years will just be crazy. What's the, what's the end game? Um, two years ago, there were rumors, uh, and again, this is you know, sort of uh, how easily the media gets swayed with, uh, with, with stories, but there were obviously rumors of, of a Google acquisition. Um, what's the end game? What, what, what do the next 10 years look like for you? Look, I think, uh, the, I don't know what the end game means. Um, I think it's, we are at one level, you know, at this 10 year mark, obviously, you know, you have these um, hypothetical milestones, right? 10 year, it's a milestone, year is a milestone, right? So at a 10 year mark, you obviously have to sit and become a lot more emotional about yourself and, you know, what you've tried to do and not tried to do. And you have to think about, forced, you're forced to think about the next 10 years. So, you know, a lot of us sat down and said, look, what are we trying to do? And I think somewhere we felt that, look, I think we've been able to uh, sustain ourselves stay alive, uh, grown decently. Uh, so the next, so a part of what we want to do is to make sure that this uh, lives beyond us. Uh, second part of it is to say, look, we've been fortunate to build something global. Uh, but it's, th but then there are companies which can stand the, um, the mark of a global company in, you know, across the world, we're not yet there. So there's a huge way to go to try and make that. So we are very hopeful to make a mark at a global level. And so that's the second goal that we would go for uh, in the next 10 years. Third is, I think the entrepreneurism in India is a lot. But I don't think in India yet people are creating large companies. I've speculated on some of these things in the past. But the reality is I don't control them. So I can't even, you know, it's one of those things, you know, age ke saath, you know, you're okay with a lot of things. So that's what it is. Great. Well, I mean, um, I just want to thank you. Thank you for, you know, for, for building uh, companies that are inspirational uh, for founders like us and, you know, for teams like us. Uh, we definitely look to emulate uh, a lot of your success, a lot of your growth. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, you know, uh, for years now, uh, you have been uh, an inspiration to us, and uh, you know we hope that our association with you continues.